Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to talk all about the bags and or items that I am going to be exploring, perhaps buying, certainly not all, while I'm in Paris. So if you wanna see what's on my shopping list, keep on watching. items written out here so I can go over them but what I also thought I would show you this is cover this up this is on my company paper uh, but I have written out for both London and Paris and this is also all on the back these are all of the stores that I want to go to so some of them have multiple locations so for example you know there's basically five Chanel boutiques in Paris that I'm looking to go to, not to mention there are some at Gallery Lafayette and Sen... I'm gonna mispronounce this. Samaritain, I think. It's a newer department store in France or in Paris. I first learned about it on Jazeline's channel, The Real Chiquine. I will have her channel linked below. She did a whole series of Paris vlogs when she was there, I think it was maybe now a couple years ago, and it was like brand new. I think she said at that time it had only been open for a couple months, so I'm hoping that it's still kind of low key under the radar, <laughs> that not as many people know about it, but they do have a lot of these luxury boutiques and concessions within that department store as well. So there's Gallery Lafayette, Bar Le Bon Marché, uh, Printemps, I think is how you say it, Spring and Samaritan. So those are four like the major kind of department stores that also carry a lot of these luxury brands. So like I said, going to all of those stores. So in no particular order whatsoever, it's just how they popped into my head and I wrote them down. This is what I may be interested in. So let's start with Dior. If you've seen in some of my recent vlogs, I have gone into a couple of the different Dior boutiques, both in Saks and in Bloomingdale's and tried on quite a few different bags. So there are two main bags that I'm interested in. The first is the Lady D Joy. So that is the East West version of the Lady Dior. Now I have always loved the Lady Dior, but what drives me nuts about that bag, and I had a mini one, year several years ago and I sold it several years ago is that the handles don't fold down they like go down like half like that <laughs> they're like this so they don't go all the way down that's one of the things I also really liked about the 9522 bag that they came out with sorry that you're hearing our workers in the background I apologize is that those handles folded not only all the way down on the outside but you could actually fold them inside as well but Let's get off of that one. The thing that I like about the D-Joy that they, I don't wanna say corrected, but that they did differently than the classic Lady yes. Dior is that the handles go all the way down. So when you're trying to wear it crossbody, you don't have that whole handle in your boob thing, which is, you know, whether you have little boobs or big boobs, it's just annoying. So anyway, I really, really like that. I am interested in looking at the small size, probably in the latte. Although, you know, don't count me out for another black bag, so who knows. Or in the Paris map print in the medium. Now, not in the printed leather. I, I personally kind of think that looks a little cheap, in my opinion. If you have it or if you love it, you do you. It's just my own opinion, but I really do like it in the embroidered version. So, and I think that that only comes in the medium size. So those are the two Lady D Joys that I am kind of gonna be looking at. And then the second bag is the Toujours bag, which again, you've seen me try on. I'll try to remember to throw some pictures up here when I was trying on these various bags in the small size. So I would use this as a handbag. I know that, you know, with the adjustable handles thing, some of them can be more of a tote, especially in that really large size. You know, they do extend long enough to go over the shoulder, but I really liked the look of the small one. It's definitely a handbag size. I love that it sort of has the same shape as the 9522, but a little more relaxed. The 9522 is really heavy. It's got a lot of hardware because those handles are actually metal on them. And so it just, it makes for a very heavy bag. It's beautiful. Please do not get me wrong. I think it is an absolutely stunning bag, but the Toujours is sort of like, it's like baby sister 
at a much more affordable price. If you're new here, my name is Lisa and I love to do videos on luxury handbag shoes, ready to wear. I love to do some styling videos and I do those things from the perspective of someone who is in the middle of her life as well as someone who is mid-sized. So if that sounds like something that's interesting to you, I would love it if you would join us here, click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know every time I upload a video. Next, let's talk about Louis Vuitton. So I was going through the website and honestly, there's not that much right now that I am like super excited to see. I mean, there are definitely some pieces that I've kind of always had on the back of a wish list kind of thing. One being the Capucines, probably in the BB size because I think the mini is a little annoying to get in and out of and it's hard to get your phone in, etc. So probably the BB size. And if I'm gonna buy it anywhere new, I should definitely buy it in Paris because I will definitely get a better price to start with. Then I'll get the VAT back. The other thing that is new to their collection that I'd like to look at is the Samur, Samur, I'm not really sure how to pronounce that, in the BB size in the new Epi version that they came out with. I have seen the bag in the canvas. Uh, again, if I've got some pictures of me trying it on, I'll pop them up here. Was not super impressed with that in the canvas. It seemed very, very thin not necessarily very well made. So I'm hoping that in the epi leather, I will like it better. And it just, it's a great crossbody bag. Like I liked the style of it and I liked the way it hung and you know, where it hit me, that kind of thing. I just didn't like the canvas that they used on this particular bag. So I will check that out. Of course, I have to see if they have a Lisa wallet. I have been trying to track down this wallet for probably at least a month. And I just think, Personally, it's a great size, although I have yet to see it in person, so I guess I shouldn't say 100%. But hello, it's the Lisa wallet. Like, of course I have to have it. So what, you know, what better place than Paris to buy it? So I think that would be great if I could find that there. Hopefully they have some in stock. A piece of ready-to-wear that I have always been interested in and definitely influenced even more so after seeing Deb at Wild Unfilter wear hers, and that is the hooded wrap coat. Now, I probably would be more inclined to get the slightly longer version, the one that comes like kind of right above the knee or sort of mid-thigh-ish. The one that Deb has is the shorter version, which I think sort of just like kind of covers the tush or bum if you are British. So we'll see, but I will try those on. Again, would definitely be a better value to buy it there. So we'll see what they have. And then the final thing on my list, I actually saw when I was at the Bloomingdale's boutique about a week ago, and those are the Malatage, Ma Malatage cat eye sunglasses. I'll, again, I'll pop a picture up here. So these are actually sort of part of the Go One Four. I don't know if they're part of that collection, but the uh, arm, but the arms that are on the sunglasses have that same like quilting on the side. And I specifically, they come in three different styles. I think a, a square, a cat eye, and a rounded version. I think the cat eye looks the best on me. I tried them on in store. I think I probably have a picture, so I'll pop that up here. Really, really liked them, but they are pricey, you guys. Those sunglasses here in the States, I think are $900. So with tax, we're close to $1,000, like very, very close, because our tax is almost 9% here in New York. So, or maybe they're 925. I think, you know what? I think they're 925 because I think when I did the math, it was just over a thousand dollars with tax. So they would definitely be less in Paris. So again, if I'm going to get them, I should get them there. Next up is Chanel. Now Chanel is one of those where I may just kind of see what they have in stock and if anything sort of strikes my fancy. But the two things that I specifically want to look at hope that they have is certainly the Kelly bag or like I said I think Chanel is really calling it the small shopping tote. I saw the nano or micro or whatever the one you want to call it is the SLG version in store tried it on pictures here was not in love first of all for three thousand dollars to basically carry my cards a lipstick and my AirPods, it was way too much money. And the leather on it was just, it was like wrinkled, like 
it wasn't like distressed or crinkled calf like you might see, for example, on a 255. It was just lambskin from what I know, but it was like kind of wrinkled. It, it just, it did not look good. Now I have seen some pictures of the full size, the actual handbag version, and that looks better, or at least the photos of the one I saw looked better. Who knows what it looks like in person because you cannot find them here, at least in New York. They were all basically pre-sold. So I'm hoping that maybe I can find one there. The other item that I will be looking at to see if they have is that Caviar Mini 22 bag. So I did end up returning that solely for the fact that I had just bought the Mini So Black, which I am loving. And I just figured if I'm gonna get another Chanel Mini Black bag, <laughs> I should do it in Paris just because I will save some money. So I did return that. I'm sure it was sold within 5.2 seconds of when it hit the stock. And I hope that person is loving it. It is a really cute bag though, I have to say, and it smelled divine. So I'm hoping that I can maybe get my hands on that while I'm in Paris. If I don't, I don't. It's not that big of a deal. I'm not gonna die without it. I definitely have some other things that are probably higher up on my wish list, and I'll kind of talk about that as I go through. Like I said, I, I'm talking about these in no particular order. And then, like I said, I'll just I'll just see what they have in stock. I don't have any other sort of specific bag in mind. Maybe that tweed, the pink tweed version of the bag that I tried on at the 57th Street Boutique, just to see if it might fit my phone better, or I'm not sure if it was absolutely the size of the bag or if it was the size of the bag coupled with the patent leather that I was trying it in which always makes it harder to get your phone in because it's it's almost kind of like sticky not it's not sticky but hopefully you understand what I'm saying especially because I have a rubberized case it it's just it's like oil and water when you're trying to put those two together <laughs> Moving on to Celine, there are basically two things that I will be looking at in the Celine boutique. The first is a, another Triumph bag, either in a lighter color or perhaps an exotic. Their lizard bags are gorgeous and that's definitely something that I want to investigate. We'll see you know, what the pricing is, what the VAT back is, etc. And then the other thing that I want to look at while I'm there is potentially getting a guitar strap or one of the canvas long crossbody straps to add on to my Romy bag. So I tried on the Romy with that at one time when I was in the Celine Boutique in Saks, I tried it on that way and I really liked the way it looked. It definitely gives the bag a whole different like flavor to it because it doesn't slouch and go like more hobo-y. It pulls out a little bit more and it looks more like a messenger bag when you wear it crossbody. So yeah, I think it would be a great addition. And like I said, if I can save a little bit of money, that would be awesome too. I will definitely head into Lueve. I don't know that I, again, have anything super specific. I will probably look at their hammock bags because I have been interested in those and I'll see, you know, sort of what the prices are there, whether it makes, I mean, I'm sure it makes sense for me to buy it there from a monetary standpoint, but you know, we'll see. It's just something I want to check out. The next brand is Moro Paris. So I did a video on sort of some lesser known quiet luxury brands, mostly from Europe. Uh, one is, mostly I should say from Paris, the yeah, one being Delvo, who is from Belgium, and I'll talk about them in a minute. But Moreau Paris is one that I had just recently discovered and heard about from another YouTube channel, and have some really nice bags, but I'm specifically looking at their tote bag. So their version, as I said, of the Neverfull. They call it the Saint-Tropez tote. So, you know, just like Goyard, we have the St. Louis tote. Here we have the Saint-Tropez tote. In either the MM or the GM size, preferably probably in the blue, although the blue is sold out online. So knows whether they'll have it in store or not. But I am really excited to go into some of these newer brands to me that are really heritage brands to Europe and specifically to Paris that I have never been able to see before. So I am very excited to check out Moreau Paris. In that same vein, I am very excited to go see Joseph Duclos. So Joseph Duclos literally has one boutique 
in the world and it is only in Paris. Now you can order online. So if you are interested in this brand and obviously I will try to vlog as much as I can and bring you information as I go, make sure that you are following my Instagram. I'll put my handle up here. It's just the same as my channel, Luxury and Life in the Middle. So if you wanna see some more like real time things of what I'm doing on my trip, I'll be posting them there obviously before I have a chance to upload any of the vlogs. But I've heard nothing but incredible things about Joseph Duclos and their brand and their uh, creative director who came from Moina, who was at Hermes. So yeah, very, very anxious to go into the store. I think all of their things are custom made. So I'll have to kind of see how that works if I end up if I end up wanting to get a piece from them, I don't know if they could then ship it to me, which I'm assuming they can, because like I said, you can order on the website, but I don't know how the VAT works with that whole process. So we'll see. So I am very interested in their Diane and their Diane messenger bag. Either one, probably the messenger a little bit more in that it is a traditional crossbody. So it's a little more of an east west style and it doesn't have a top handle. So it's definitely made to be more of a crossbody, a little more casual bag as opposed to the Diane, which is more similar maybe to a Kelly bag, top handle has that more sort of trapezoidal shape kind of vibe. So we'll see what I like, but I'm very, very excited to be able to go check out that brand. I will also be definitely checking out Moina. Now they do have a boutique there and then they do have, I believe, some concessions at, I'm pretty sure, uh, Gallery Lafayette as well well as maybe one of the other, maybe Bon Marche. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but I know Gallery Lafayette, they have one. So I'm anxious to go in there. Again, probably looking at the Gabrielle Clutch, which is sort of their version of the Kelly Pochette at, again, a better price. So we'll see what those look like. I've seen them at the boutique concession in Saks, but I'm sure they will have a lot more options and colors and leather and things so I'm excited to see what they have. So still sticking on this kind of quiet luxury lesser known heritage brands I will be going to Delvo. So not only will I be going to the boutique just in general to check that out so I will definitely be going to the actual boutique to check out the different styles. We do have a boutique here in New York which I have been into a couple times and I love their bags and I've been very interested in the lingo which unfortunately they just are always out of stock of. But in addition to that, I am very excited to say that when I was talking with Brandon, who if you don't know, Brandon has left Fendi, which makes me very, very sad. Um, you know, thankfully I have some wonderful contacts here in New York still at the, especially at the flagship boutique. So I, I'm, I know I will be well taken care of, but Brandon is actually moving to Bottega, so that is exciting and how coincidental that I have maybe found a little bit of a love for Bottega. In fact, I don't have that on my list here. I don't know why, but I will be stopping at Bottega. But my point is, I was talking to Brandon the other night. Um, he, I was telling him about my trip and he was so excited for me and I said, yeah, he's, I think he was asking where I was gonna try to go and one of the places I said was Delvo. And he said, oh my gosh, my old VP is like the head of Delvo for the United States for North America. He's like immediately like leaves me on red and goes apparently and texts her anyway. So she very kindly reached out to me and I am going to get to go to their spring summer Paris Fashion Week presentation. So I'm so excited about that. So I will obviously bring you whatever footage I can bring vlogging that. I'm super excited and obviously I'll get to see what they have coming out for spring summer next year. And finally, let's talk about Hermes. I know you were all wondering, Lisa, are you not hoping to get an appointment? Yes, I am. So unfortunately, I reached out to the sales associate who I worked with when I got my Birkin and she was completely filled up, which totally did not surprise me asking her like a week ahead of time when it's Paris Fashion Week for an appointment, you know, probably it's not 
gonna happen. So I was not surprised when she wrote back and said that she was already totally booked. But, you know, I can try the lottery system, which, you know, there's a million more people there now with Paris Fashion Week, so they're all gonna be trying to get an appointment, but you never know. I might be one of those lucky ones. If I am, this is what I will be asking for. So I have decided that I don't really want a gold Birkin anymore. I think I've decided that I don't find my Evelyn TPM, it's not that I don't find it easy to style, I just, I think because it's a warmer color because of the gold, it just doesn't suit me as well. So I have decided to shift that to Etoupe, which Etoupe is definitely a cooler toned neutral and it really can kind of cross between gray and taupe and depending on the light and I love the fact that it also has the contrast stitching so my wish list item my number one item that I would ask for is a Birkin 25 because I don't have a 25 yet in a tube and I mean preferably I like palladium hardware but it doesn't matter like the, the hardware is the, my least of my concerns kind of stepping down from that I would be open to any pink color probably and anything in like the cream family again in a broken 25 again hardware don't really care I would also be interested in looking at the Della Cavalleria bag again because of my lifestyle here Crossbody bags are just super convenient for me to have with walking around and taking public transportation. So that is definitely something that I would like to take a look at. Again, probably in the tube color or black, or, you know, we'll see what other colors maybe they might have available. And then finally, maybe a Kelly pochette. I am not a mini Kelly girl, so that is not on my list. When I gave my wish list to my new sales associate at the Meatpacking District, I specifically said, I do not want a mini Kelly. Like, that's not my jam. I, I have no desire, so let everybody else fight for those. But a Kelly Pochette, I think, might be kind of up my alley. I like that it has more of a crossbody strap. It's easier to get in and out of. It's a little bit bigger. And for that one, I would definitely be open to like colors and even like bright colors. So I don't know that I would limit myself on the Kelly Pochette and just see what they might have. So what's on the top of my list? I've listed off a lot of different brands and a lot of different items that I'm interested in looking at, but what are my sort of top tier items that I'm focused on? I think you might be surprised by that. So from a sort of accessory, small other good perspective, it's definitely the Lisa wallet and the sunglasses from Louis Vuitton, as well as that extra strap from Celine. When it comes to bags, I definitely want to look at, and I'm very interested in the Celine Triumph in, like I said, either a lighter color or perhaps an exotic. I'm really interested in the Moreau Paris tote bag just because it is a much more affordable version of the Neverfull and I just you know I could see myself carrying that and also using it for travel which would be great. Then I would say the Joseph Duclos Gabri or Diane Messenger bag would probably be next but top on my list is the lingo from Delvo. I am, I, like I said, I've been wanting that bag since I saw it last June when I was here in New York and just haven't been able to get my hands on it because it is always out of stock, especially in the color that I want it in. So that is the one that I have my fingers crossed on that I will be able to get. And obviously again, at a much better price. I, you know, the Chanel stuff kind of eh. I, I'm also pretty interested if I can get a D-Joy, again, at a much better price because Dior doesn't tend to hold its resale value very well. Those are definitely bags that you either want to try to get on the resale market or in this particular case, like in Paris or even like Hawaii, if you're there where they're cheaper. I would say, I would say probably the Delvo bag is the number one item on my list. So definitely stay tuned to this channel. Make sure that you're subscribed so you can follow all of my vlogs when I come back and then also the unboxings to come and make sure you have that notification bell turned on. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It does help the YouTube algorithm. And like I said, subscribe, trying to get to 3000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you can help me out with that, I would be so appreciative. If you haven't had enough of me yet, I will pop another video up here for you to watch. And wherever you are, I hope you are having an amazing day or evening and I will catch you in the next one.